The last section is about graphing rational functions, which means we're going to see fractions, okay? Um, there's a lot of good information that I recommend you go through and read very carefully. I think some of these things, though, you're going to kind of figure out as we do some of the examples. Um, this page especially highlights some of the details that I'm going to go through. So if at any point you forget how we're doing some of these things, like later on in class or when you're doing the homework, you can always go back to page 9 uh, and then see how we're doing these steps, okay? But here are the most important steps. I mean, here's the most important thing that we're going to talk about, okay? Whenever you have a rational function, so see, if you see a fraction with variables on the top and on the bottom, first step we're going to do is to factor everything, which is what we're used to doing anyway. Canceling anything that's in common. We're used to doing that too, okay? We're going to find the x-intercepts and y-intercepts, which is how we did the polynomial graphs. Once we know that, then we're going to look for any asymptotes. Sometimes, well, actually, there will always be vertical asymptotes uh, for rational functions. Horizontal, maybe. Oblique, maybe. Okay, it just depends on the, on the scenario. We'll go through those. Okay, and then from there, I would say about 50 to 75% of the time, just from doing all this, you know exactly what to draw. Oblique, I'll, I'll explain that. Um, actually, this is a good time to do that. Here's what we can do, okay? To find x-intercepts, you know how you set y equal to 0, right? These come from the numerator. Because the denominator can never be 0, right? So if you're solving something equal to 0, the only place that it would make sense to figure out when that happens is in the numerator, okay? The y-intercept, you just plug x equal to 0 into the function, just like before. Okay, vertical asymptotes come from the <coughs> denominators. So if we saw an x plus 4 in the denominator, we know that x can never be negative 4. That's what we say is a vertical asymptote. Okay. These horizontal and oblique, there's actually three scenarios, okay? So three cases. First case is easy. If the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator. Do you guys know what I mean by that now? So if I have a degree of, let's say, like 2 on the top, like x squared plus 3x plus whatever, and the denominator, I would want what? 4. Yeah, something to the fourth, anything that's bigger than quadratic, right? Mm -hmm. If this is the case, then there's always a horizontal asymptote of y equal to 0. That's actually kind of easy to understand that because if you have a linear function on top and you have a quadratic on the bottom, when x gets really big, the stuff on the bottom is going to be a lot bigger than the stuff on the top. Okay? So essentially you're going to get fractions that are close to zero and as eventually as we get close to infinity, uh, the function will get really close to zero. Okay? Second case, if the degree in the numerator equals degree in the denominator, okay, then there's always a horizontal asymptote 
and the equation is y equals lead coefficient over lead coefficient. <coughs> Where? First. Here? If deg Down. degree? Always? Yes. So if it was like 3x squared plus blah 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 over 2x squared plus uh, blah blah blah, then it'd be 3 over 2 is the equation for the horizontal asymptote. Gotcha. Okay? And I'll, I'll, explain, I'll explain why these three have to be the case, okay? So you guys, it's not just about memorizing these things, but you should kind of understand, like, why this stuff works, well, actually works. Always. Oh. Yeah, we that. Always. That was like 10 seconds ago. Yeah, we haven't been there. Yeah. Third case. I'm kind of out of space here. I'll just do it here. Can you guys tell me what the third case is? So we did degree of denominator bigger. Oh, if it's smaller. So, yeah, if the degree of denominator <coughs> is less than the degree of the numerator, then there's always an oblique asymptote. And the equation is y equals the quotient without the remainder, no remainder, when you divide the actual equation. Okay. So that's why we, we did synthetic and long division because sometimes when you see the scenario, if you want to see what the oblique asymptote is, you're going to have to divide the actual thing out to see what, what it looks like. Well, there is a remainder. Okay, so here, let me explain. If you guys don't mind, I'll explain exactly why these things make sense, okay? Okay. So let's start with an example of the first case. Um... You can either do this, you know what, you can do this right here if you want, if you need to. I'm just going to kind of explain why the first case makes sense. First case was degree of denominator bigger. So let's say we have something like x plus 1 over x squared plus x plus 5, right? <coughs> Here's what ends up happening, okay? Thank you. The asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, they always represent what's going on all the way at the end of the graph, like by infinity or by negative infinity. Okay? So if you think about plugging in really, really, really big numbers for x, so what's an example of a really big number? A million. million. Let's do a million. So on the top, you'd have a, something really close to a million, right? A million or a million and one, pretty reasonably close, right? Yeah. On the bottom, though, when you square a million, Is it a billion? you get one followed by 12 zeros. What is that? Million, billion, trillion, okay? You get a huge number, right? It's the US debt. So, <laughs> so here's what's happening. As x, as x goes really, really far up towards infinity, the top, you get a kind of big number, kind of big, divided by what? Really big number. Do we agree that this is going to be smaller than that? By a, t by a lot, right? When you take a number and divide it by something that's much larger than it, what's that going to give you? A decimal. A decimal between what? Zero and one. So as we plug in numbers that are even larger, this is going to get even smaller. Does that make sense? Okay. This is why we say there's a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. Because this function, we say, is more powerful than the linear one. So this one is going to 
basically get larger much faster than that one, so eventually you're doing small over big, which is going to be close to zero. And it'll never equal zero. And it'll never equal zero, but it'll keep getting closer and closer. Do you guys kind of buy that? Yes. Okay. The second case um, was if the degrees were equal, right? So check this out. If we have x squared plus 4x plus 5, and let's say 2x squared plus 3x plus 1, okay? We just talked about how quadratics kind of overrule all the other stuff, right? Because they're much more powerful in the end. So think about it like this. If we plugged in a million here, a million squared, really large. Here, this is just going to double it, right? This 4x plus 5 and this 3x plus 1 are going to add something to it, but not as much compared to squaring it. Does that make sense? Yes. So as x gets really, really large, and this is an informal thing, and when in calculus you're actually going to spend some time doing it more formally, but this stuff, as x goes to infinity, pretty much doesn't do anything. Doesn't do much when x is really big. So what that means then, if you just focus here, what can you do with the x squareds? So we say that y is about x squared over 2x squared, which is about 1 half, which is the lead coefficient divided by the lead coefficient. So that's the shortcut. So if you see an equation like this, same degree, right away you say, I got a horizontal, and the horizontal asymptote is y equals 1 divided by 2. Okay? The last case was something where the degree and the numerator was bigger, bigger or the denominator was smaller, depending on how you word it. So let's say like x squared plus 4x plus 5. Let's say x minus 1. As x gets really, really large, let's actually divide synthetically so you guys can see what I'm talking about. When you divide synthetically, we put 1 in the box. You guys remember doing that, right? Yeah. Yeah. What numbers do I put here? 1, 4. 1, 4, 5. Bring the 1 down, multiply, add, multiply, 10. So then this is actually equal to... Uh, x plus 5 plus 10 over x minus 1. And again, we're using this argument that as things get really big, right? Well, as things get really big, this guy over here, 10 divided by a huge number, what's that going to be? Pretty much nothing, right? Really close to zero. So we're arguing that this is what the equation looks like, really, as we get really far out there. So it just kind of looks like a line. Does that make sense? So this is where these three rules are coming from. Okay. Now the last thing I want to add, and we'll do an exam uh, two examples, maybe three if, if you guys want it. The last thing I want to add is this. This is a huge point that I need to make. Sometimes these graphs, not always, sometimes these graphs will cross the horizontal asymptote. The only asymptotes that they will never cross are the vertical ones. Because otherwise they're not functions. Okay? They can never cross the vertical asymptotes. But, and I'll just use this to draw an example. Let's say we have a horizontal right there, and vertical right here. These horizontal asymptotes represent what's happening way out there, way away from zero, right? So if we have something that looks like this, we could have something that looks like that, where it comes up, but then it gets really close to that line from the other side. Okay, And that's not all the time, but it will happen occasionally, and we'll have a way of figuring out if and when that happens. Okay, So more, I'll explain how to check, will come later. Okay. Are there any questions so far on the details? There's a lot of stuff. 
there's a lot of stuff that goes into the process of graphing these, which is why it's kind of hard. But if you can kind of follow the process and just stick with those steps every time, you should be okay. Yes? I still don't get what the oblique is. The oblique asymptote? Yeah. Instead of a horizontal, so like here we had horizontal was y equals 0, right? Yeah. So if you graph that, your horizontal asymptote is right on the x-axis, right? Mm -hmm. Here, if you graph this horizontal asymptote, it just shifts up half unit, so now it's like that, right? Okay. Here, we're saying that there's an asymptote, but it's not horizontal. It's actually a line. Oh. So it's going to look something like this, like y equals x plus 5. Okay. 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 That's what we mean by oblique. Some people call them slant asymptotes or line asymptotes. I don't like to call them that because it could be even a quadratic. Mm -hmm. We're not going to deal with those, but it could be. Okay? Yes? What's what? When you have that, so you'd have to have a vertical. You don't have any of these without vertical asymptotes, right? So you'd probably have something that looks like this, and then down here. Okay. And we'll, like I, like I said, when we do a couple of these examples, it'll get cleared up. There's just a lot of details. Okay. All right. So let's turn to page. Go to page ten. Let's start with let's start with number two. Okay. So if we're following our steps, uh, first we're supposed to what? Factor. Factor everything. So let's let's do that. This is the same as what in the numerator? X plus one minus one. X plus one. X minus one. What about in the denominator? x plus 3, x minus 1. Okay. Now, we have a common factor, right? So we're going to remove this from the equation, and we're going to just worry about graphing x plus 1 over x plus 3 only. So this is what we're going to graph. With this little thing that we call a hole, And these always come, anytime you cancel anything out, that's when you get holes. So you guys can remember that, right? If anything cancels, there's going to be a hole in the graph. And all that means is that when you graph it, you're just going to put a little open circle at that location. Because this means that x cannot be what here? x can't be 1, even because it's still part of the original function. But they do. it's a common factor, we cancel it, but we still cannot have x equal 1. It can be, it cannot be negative 3 either. Okay, so that's actually where we get the vertical asymptote. So now what we do is look at what's left. Okay, this denominator tells us the vertical asymptote is negative 3. And then we always write x equals negative 3. Always write equations of lines, not just numbers. Uh, x intercepts. We've already factored the numerator. This is all that's left. So if you set the top equal to 0, what's x going to be? So negative 1 is the x-intercept. y-intercept, you just plug in 0 for x. So 0 plus 1, 0 one plus third. 3, what is that? 1 third. And now here's where you've got to slow down a little bit until you get the hang of it. This is where it gets tricky. Horizontal asymptotes, you've got to look at which case it is. What degree do we have here in the original problem? X squared. X squared. X squared. X squared. You see how the lead coefficient is 1 for both of these? Yeah. So the horizontal is going to be y equals 1 divided by 1, or just 1. Are there any questions on how I'm getting those details? Yes, the horizontal one, really. Okay, so for the horizontal, whether you look here or look at the beginning, the degrees are identical, quadratic over quadratic or linear over linear. Whenever the degrees are the same, you take the leading coefficient and divide it by the leading coefficient of the denominator, 1 over 1 is, is, is 1. Kyle? Is there ever a situation where you can't do that? Never. Because it's got to be the same degree, so then 
It'll work out that way. Unless the degree is different, but then it's a different scenario. Okay, so are we good on the details here? Okay. Now, let's worry about this hole, because I want to get every detail possible before I start sketching this thing, okay? So we have a hole. And we know where the hole is at, because we know that we cannot have a value at x equals 1. Okay, so that's going to be the x-coordinate of the hole. And to figure out the y-coordinate, you take this 1 and you stick it back into the simplified equation for x. That's the worst arrow ever drawn. So, two over four. so 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 3 is 4, 2 fourths one half. is 1 half. So there's going to be a hole. This is the one place in the graph that doesn't exist because of this denominator that was there originally. I just said plug in the 1 into the simplified equation. Okay. The last thing we're going to do. So remember, over here I said sometimes these graphs cross horizontal asymptotes, right? Okay. So here's, here's how we know whether that's going to happen or not. So we're going to check to see, and we're not going to write it out like this every time. Okay, obviously there's a lot of writing going on right now. Check to see if graph crosses the horizontal asymptote. Here's how we do that. It's very easy. Okay. What is the horizontal asymptote? Y equals 1 is the horizontal asymptote. We're going to set that equal to the function that we're graphing. Because if it goes to the value of y equals 1, then at some point, x plus 1 over x plus 3 has to give us that value, right? Let's solve the equation. How do I solve here? Multiply by x plus 3, so we get x plus 3 equals x plus 1. And then what? Subtract x's, whatever you want to do, I mean, it, what happens? So what does that mean if everything cancels? No solution. It's not possible. So it doesn't cross. Okay. There is no value for x where it will cross the horizontal asymptote. Very nice. Okay. Now, when we get to this point, do you, see if we're, do you see how we're checking here? If we actually get an x value like x equals 4, well, then that's exactly where it grows through the horizontal asymptote. Okay? So sometimes these x's will cancel and you get nothing, which means that it doesn't cross. <laughs> Other times, like if this were a 2x here, you see what I'm saying? Then you'd get a value. Okay? So right now we're not going to worry about it. So let's graph. Okay? Oh. So first thing I do is start by graphing all these details, okay? First, I do the vertical asymptotes. <coughs> so x equals negative 3, and I always label everything on my graph so I don't get confused, okay? Um, there's the vertical. The horizontal is at y equals positive 1, so maybe something like this. Everyone okay so far? Okay. And now I'm going to label my intercepts. We have x equals negative 1. So if this is negative 3, negative 1's got to be over here somewhere. A y-intercept of 1 third. So if this is 1, 1 third will be down here somewhere. Okay. And now we're supposed to kind of look at it and draw it just by looking at it. Like I said, about 50 to 75% of the time you can do that and you're good. Other times you have more work to do. In this case, the argument is there is no other possible choice for this except to have this part of the, this be part of the graph. You guys see why? Okay. We're always going to have, like if there's one vertical asymptote, there's going to be two pieces to the graph. If there's two vertical asymptotes, then we're going to have three sections to the graph, okay? Here's the right half of it. The left half of it either has to sit up here in this sector, or it's going to have to be down here. 
Which one makes more sense? Opposite. Why? Don't draw this. Don't draw this, but why is this bad if I did this? Because then it wouldn't be a It's not going to cross both ends. Saeed, say that loud. What can't cross what? <laughs> okay, I thought you were going to say something else. You're, you're, you're on the right track. How many, okay, what, hold on. Raphael, do you see it? No, this is, you can have this and just have one. Yeah. You're going to do a horizontal line check. Mm, not quite. You guys are, th I like the way you're thinking. Let me ask you guys a question. Maybe this will help you. Why can't, no, why can't no. you go oh, one? You want to think about it some more? Okay. Give me 30 seconds. Nobody talk. Just think about it for 30 seconds. Why does this, why does this part of the graph make not, doesn't, why doesn't this make sense in this scenario? Think about that for a second. No, because it can't be like a person. Something to do with plus or minus. Brendan knows. Brendan knows? Yeah. What is it? Ashley knows. I don't know what it is. What do you think, Brendan? I think it's because of the X intercepts. Ooh, nice. How many X intercepts does this have? Oh. There's only one. We already got it right there. Yes. I thought that's what you were going to say. Oh, okay. So you were right. Okay. So everybody kind of see that why why that works? If you now that you've seen this once, okay. If you want to get, if you just want to do this without thinking about it, right there, I would have gotten another x intercept up here, right? in order for this to be possible. So let's say I did. Let's say I got like negative 5. Then this would be perfect. Okay? Now, since I did not, this is the final graph. And if, if the y-intercept, or the, the horizontal asymptote was at like negative 1, then you would have it be on the lower part right? Yes. Okay. That's absolutely right. Because it, it, if we had it in the top part, it would have to cross again to get down yeah. there. Very good. Okay. Yep. Okay. Erica? Okay. So, um, is it still possible to get, like, multiple x intercepts and then you'd have to graph it, like, like, you just do not the orange one? Yes, it is possible. Question was, is it possible to have more x intercepts and then would this be a scenario? Answer is yes. You would never have more than one y intercept. Because then it wouldn't be a function. So basically, if you ever have a graph like this, the only other place, it could be like, if you could have, can it ever just be the one right there? Like, here, okay. Here are the only possibilities when you graph this. You're either going to have two things up here, two things down here, or like this. And it just depends on what details you have. Okay? The details... What do you mean, side to side? I mean, up and down. Like this? Yeah. No, because then it's not a function anymore, right? Yeah, because oh, yeah. there's more than There's only, there's got to be one piece of the graph on each side of the asymptote. Oh. Okay? Of, of the vertical asymptote. Okay? But not the horizontal. Horizontal, that just tells us about what's going on at the end. Can you ever have three? Three yeah, sections of the graph? Yeah. Yes, you'd have to have one more vertical asymptote. Okay. Erica. Well, no, because that's just for this case. Yeah. There's, there's more. We're gonna just let let's go through and you'll see. Okay. Um, I'm trying to find one that's. Yo. Go ahead. Okay. Let's look at. Let's look at number seven, shall we? Sure. Sometimes. 
So you guys should already kind of know what to do. Can you guys do that real quick? Take 30 seconds and get all these details. Find the x-intercepts, find the y-intercepts, find the vertical, find the horizontal. And then we'll check to see to make sure we all have seven. Let's see if we all get it right. I'm going to quickly do it and then put it up on the screen so you can check. <coughs> Was that a sneeze? Yeah. Oh, all right. All right, here's what I got. Where did I get negative 2? The numerator. That's what you said equal to 0 to find x-intercepts. Y-intercept, just plug in 0 for x. You get negative 1a. Since nothing canceled, you could do it even at the beginning if you like. So then you get two, six, 2 over negative 16. That's an easier way to do it since nothing canceled out. Okay? As long as nothing cancels, yeah. Yep. Vertical asymptotes, I have two of them because there's two denominators here and nothing canceled out. You guys see that? Okay? Lastly, why is y equal to 0 here? What case is this? The first case where the degree of the denominator is bigger. Anytime this is bigger, then it's always y equals 0. Okay? So here are the details. Let's sketch what we know and see what we can draw. And if we can't, we'll talk about what we can do. Wait, don't we have to check first? No. Oh, to check to see if it crosses the horizontal asymptote? Yeah. Well... Yes, and yes and no. I, don't, I know you don't like that answer, but here's how I know that it will cross the horizontal asymptote. Two is on the, two. Yeah, it, it already told me where it crosses y equals 0 because that's the x-intercept, right? Yeah. So you can do that, but you're going to get the same, same answer. Oh, that's gonna be your answer. You're going to get negative 2, yeah, because we've already set it equal to 0 to find the x-intercept. Yeah. If you already know that the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote, and you have x-intercepts, you, you don't have to, because like that, that it wouldn't be what? You're checking to see if this graph is going to ever equal y equals 0. So what would you, you would set this equal to 0, right? Okay. But we already know that it does equal 0 at one point, because we already found that point. That's the x-intercept. You see what I mean? Okay. So here's the horizontal asymptote, just a dotted or a dashed line on the y, on the x-axis. So this is y equals zero. I have two verticals, one at x equals four, and then one at x equals negative four. And then the other thing I have is a y-intercept of negative one-eighth. So maybe that's here somewhere. You set each denominator equal to zero. So x equals negative four from this one, x equals four from that one. Okay. So if I'm looking at this, 
The only thing I know for certain right now, oh, and I didn't graph the x-intercept, did I? That's right over here somewhere. The x-intercept. Question. Typically, not uh, yes, no. I mean, it just depends. Okay. So look, there's a whole lot of scenarios going on right now. Whole lot of scenarios. Okay. Is it clear that there's no x-intercepts over here? So I have only two options. I could have this, or I could have that. But I don't have any information right now to tell me what, which it is, okay? So unfortunately, what we're going to have to do, since we know that x equals 4 right here, what we're going to do is plug in x equals 5 maybe, just to see where the function is at. And that'll tell me what, which one it is. So if I, if I take x equals 5, and plug it into the simplified function, we get what for the numerator? <coughs> 7. And then 5 plus 4 is 9. 5 minus 4 is 1. 7 over 9. I don't really care that it's a fraction. What I care about, though, is that this is positive. <laughs> if this is positive, then it means that the graph has to be above the x-axis. Does that make sense? So it's not a hard thing to do. You just have to remember to do it. Okay? Absolutely. We'll get there. Is this part clear? I'm doing the easy part first. What if you plug in a different number and you got a negative number? You won't. If you plugged in anything that's to the right of 4, like 4.1, 4 4.2, 7, 300, you're always going to get a positive answer. Oh, so the left, left is going to be a different story, maybe. We have to see. Okay. Erica. What's the Because it's to the right of 4, okay. yes. Because um, I want to know what's happening on the right of x equals 4. Like, 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 uh, it's kind of like that, yeah. Sometimes we will, sometimes we won't. So I don't want to say it's, okay. Abby? Yes. That's why it's on the top. Yep, that's all we need to see is that this is positive. If I'd have gotten like negative 1 over 20, I don't care that it's the fraction, then I would just know that it's on the denominator. Yes, because it's on the right. And I misspoke. It would be on the bottom. Not, I don't know why I said the denominator. Anything else? Okay, so the other easy part to check is over here. I don't have an x-intercept over here. I got nothing. So it's either going to be up here or down here. Uh, what could I check? Negative 5. All right, so let's check it out. x equals negative 5. Let's plug it in. We get negative 3. Negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. Negative 5 minus 4. Negative 9. I see three negatives here. I don't care what it is, but three negatives is going to be negative. So what does that mean? That means it's going to be below the x-axis. So it's going to look something like that. Everybody good with that so far? Okay. So now the next question is, okay, we have one more section. What's going on in here? Okay. There's really only two options. It could start up here and kind of look like a cubic graph, like this. Do you guys see that? Or it could be kind of this weird parabola-ish shape where it starts down kind of bounces off negative 2 and then goes through there and then comes back around and goes down this way. Okay? But we already know, we already know from experience that in order for things to bounce off of there, we'd have to see a square here, right? Yeah. 
There is no square there. So it's going to have to be like this option. Should we test that? Well, it's not, it's not cubic here. It's it just because of the y-intercept. What's that? It's just passing through the points. That's all it's doing. And then how do you know where to start? What do you mean? Oh, you don't. You don't know where to start. You just have to think about it. There's no, like, it's this case or that. I mean, this is the only one that made sense here because of the information we had. Now, if you don't get that from the information that you have, you have another option that you can do. You know how here we checked to see where the graph was? You could say, all right, let me check negative 3 because that's between negative 2 and negative 4. Do you see what I'm saying? So if you plugged in x equals negative 3 into the function you're going to get a positive value. So that tells you that the graph is up here somewhere. So that has to start from down here. In fact, if you don't believe me, we can do it. x equals negative 3. Let's see. At x equals negative 3, we get negative 1 on top. We get positive 1 in the uh, first factor. And then negative 7 in the other. Two negatives is positive, right? So then it's got to be up here somewhere. So that's why this is the only shape that makes sense. Yes, Kyle. Yep. You wouldn't have one in that case. In fact, there's going to be a vertical axis because if you factor out an x down here, you get x equals zero for a vertical, so you're not going to cross the y-axis. Okay. All right. Guys, I know this is hard, and this is kind of long because there's a lot of stuff going on, okay? You guys generally do a much, no offense to Block D, a much better job of listening to other people's questions. Mm -hmm. I feel that you learn because sometimes someone thinks of something that you never would have thought of, and you're like, oh. And then by us going over it, it makes you that much smarter, okay? Don't lose sight of that. You guys are generally pretty good at doing that. Right now, it's getting kind of long. I know. I apologize. But some of you are now having side conversations and not listening to what's going on. Okay? <coughs> one more. I just wanted to cover. We did one. This was where the degree was the same, right? Yeah. This was where the degree was bigger on the bottom. So what's the last case we're going to do together? Bigger in the numerator. So let's find one of those. Here we go, number nine. Okay. Now I'll tell you right now, this packet is very nice to you because it tells you there's an oblique, right? Oh, wow. Now on the quiz and on the Did test, you're going to have blanks for everything. It'll say x intercept, y intercept, horizontal, vertical, or oblique. You're going to have to tell me. There is no oblique, or there is, and you're not going to know which one unless you know that this is the case where there is one. Okay, so let's, can we factor anything? Let's see. X minus 3. X minus 2, that makes more sense. X minus 1 over X minus 4. From there, let's get all the details. The oblique we'll talk about in a sec. What's, what are the x-intercepts? Two and one. Two and one. Y-intercept. Nothing canceled, so I could just plug in zero back here if I wanted to. It's a little easier if you see that. Negative, Negative a half. Do you just take the last two numbers? Yeah, because there's no x's there. Because okay. if you plug in zero for x, all the x's just go away. And you can do that as long if this if this is just another version of that where nothing canceled out, then it, it's okay to do that. Yeah. Okay, so when you're finding x intercepts, you only use the numerator. Only the numerator. Okay. Now the denominator, if you take the denominator and set it equal to zero, you get x equals four for a vertical asymptote. Because the denominator can never equal four, so that's where the vertical comes from. Okay. Now for the oblique, all right? Nothing canceled out for the oblique. Do you remember what we have to do? We have to actually divide and see what's going on. Now, because this is a nice denominator, I can just do synthetic. 
okay? So if I do synthetic, what goes in the little box? So 4, 1, negative 3, 2, bring down the 1, 1, 1 times 4, add it up, 1 times 4 is 4, 2 plus 4 is 6. This is the remainder. We don't care about remainders when we're doing this oblique asymptote. What does this translate to, though? X plus 1. So we're going to write Y equals X plus 1. That's the oblique asymptote. This is the remainder. That's the constant. That represents 1X, right? So that's, that's how we're getting this. We don't have to do anything with that except write it down, and now we graph it. So 2, 1, vertical asymptote at 4, x equals 4 as a vertical asymptote, y-intercept of negative a half, And now we just have this oblique that goes through, what's the y-intercept for this equation? One. Goes through 1, has a slope of 1, so maybe something like this. <coughs> so this is your oblique asymptote, y equals x plus 1. And remember, there's two pieces to the graph. Here's the vertical asymptote. There's got to be something on the left and then something on the right. There's only one option that makes sense on the left. The only option that makes sense on the left is this. It's going to go through 2, come back and hit 1, go through the y-intercept, and it's going to look something like that. That's the only option that makes sense. Yes? Y-intercept was negative a half. Yeah, for the oblique asymptote. Yep. Because it's y equals mx plus b. We okay with this? On the right side, there's got to be something else. Does this make sense right here? Nope. Why? Yeah. That's going to hit the x-axis. We don't. There is no point there. So it's just got to be up here somewhere. So something like this. And that's it. So that's an example of all different kinds, okay?